Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stanis. This is episode 194, season eight. Today's date is January 24th, 2023. And uh, welcome to the show. On uh, today's program, I'm going to do this. Will be a special episode. I will, this will be a tribute to radio disc jockey Lynn Bramer from WXRT. 93 FM, and I will talk about his uh, his biography and my memories of listening to him. And uh, because uh, the reason that I'm doing this special episode is that he passed away this uh, this Sunday, uh, prostate cancer, and he was 68 years old. So this will be a little tough for me to do, and uh, I hope everyone will like it. I will do the best I can to do this because in the past episodes i'm very nervous i stammer you know that i'm just being myself so uh just bear with me okay uh right now the program will go into a commercial break and this program is brought to you by charms big pop candy (laughs) which uh it means it's those big lollipops uh that that the charms company made and so here's a commercial from 1970 i remember this uh product very well i've eaten it when i was a kid so sit back and enjoy the commercial and i'll be right back with the program thank you everyone here we are in australia waiting for the international charms big pop duel to begin the challenger eddie from america chooses wild cherry the champion melbourne of sydney lemon America makes the first move, but the Aussie counters. They're both getting their licks in. Wait, Melvin is down to his safety stick. But no, it seems Melvin chewed his charms, Big Pop, and that violates international law. That means we have a new champion. And remember, world, charms, Big Pops are made to last because there's more flavor in them. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Charms Big Pop Candy. Uh, I remember, like I said before, I remember this commercial very well, and I've ha- I've had this product when I was a kid. And uh, Charms Big Pops came in wonderful flavors, cherry, uh, raspberry, I believe, lemon. They had that. Uh, also, uh, yeah, blue raspberry. The raspberry was blue. Yeah. <laughs> like that and uh and i don't know what other flavors they had i don't i'm not sure uh but the big they're huge the this one uh the big pops weren't that popular but the blow pops were which were which the lollipops were had bubble gum inserted those were good and i love those and they came in let me see grape and uh cherry and i think watermelon i think so i used to buy these all the time when i was growing up in uh, on the southwest side of chicago i used to go to edwards drugstore on west 79th street and on, it was on the corner of hamlin avenue uh right near bogan high school i used to ride my bike and get all kinds of candies and i used to get the blow pops and the and the big pops there too also i went to crestline pharmacy that was on 79th and Pulaski, and that was right next. Uh, that was right next door where they had Barnaby's Pizza, <laughs> which is still uh, there's one place left. I think it's in Des Plaines, I think, or Northbrook. I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's good pizza back then, and uh, it's uh, Charms Pops. They're still made, but they're different flavors. They're they're called Sweet Pops or Sour Pops. The blow pops are still there so uh that's a nice uh, memory from the from the 1970s as a kid <laughs> okay at the beginning of the program uh i said i will do a tribute episode for uh lynn bramer the disc jockey from wxrt 93 fm so uh i will talk about him and then there i have a couple clips uh, audio clips that is of him one is he is speaking about uh how he got started in you know how he got started in the job is uh at wxrt and also lynn's bins 
it's just the opening. So we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so here I'm going to talk about his biography. So Lynn Bremer was born August 19th, 19, 19, 19, 19, 90, 1954, excuse me. <laughs> and uh, he hosted the mornings uh, on, on, on the radio program from 1991 all the way to 2020. And uh, then he went to middays. He switched. Uh, I don't know when. I don't remember when. And then he left uh, in the summer. I think about July or something like that. Uh, because he was, uh, uh, he announced he had prostate cancer. Uh, I don't remember if he did that before. Uh, I'm not sure. So uh, he was diagnosed. And he, according to sor to most sources, that he was uh, he've had it for several years, so it claims that the, he had it. Uh, it was caught early, and it was treated early. And then it returned, and then he went through the like what I did. Um, it, uh, he went through the biopsy. He went through the CT scans. Uh, he went through uh, radiation. Uh, the difference between me and him is that uh, when I was diagnosed in December 2019, it was decided that to be removed. Uh, I don't know if his was removed. I have no idea. It didn't mention surgery. Uh, I don't know. So it probably was very small. Could have been. And... Uh, Mine went okay. Yeah, mine went okay. And then, uh, then I went through radiation for thirty nine weeks. He probably did that as well, and and taking medication, he probably did that too. And I didn't go chemotherapy at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um. So uh, I'm not sure what medications he took. Uh, I'm taking two right now. I'm taking the Orgovix and the Extandi, and he. Uh, there was an interview on Channel Two re, uh, a while back. He says uh, he's he was off chemotherapy, and he was returning to the airwaves. And he's, he said, "I'm taking a break." And he he looked okay. He sounded okay. And uh, so that was uh, when I found that out that he was diagnosed. I uh, replied on Twitter. And I told him about that, uh, about me. And I also sent him an email. And I told him, you know, I feel uh, I feel very, uh, I'm so sad about this, you know, because I'm going through it. And please, you know, please fight it. We got to fight this god-awful disease. And he replied. And he said, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, he asked me how I'm doing. And I... And I Gave him the status. That was about, you know, uh, when he got that, uh, when he mentioned that at the time. So let's go back to his life. Uh, he was born in New York and he graduated from Colgate University in 1976. And that's where he got started in radio. Um, then he began to work professionally in radio in January 1997. And his first uh, job as a disc jockey was in Alban Albany, New York. And the radio station at the time was WQBK-FM. Uh, I don't know what the number was. So uh, anyway, uh, he earned a nickname over there, the Reverend of, uh, of Rock and Roll. <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, I posted, I found a picture of him, of, he was, he was at the radio station, he was holding an album by Frank Zappa, I don't know which uh, album it was, and but that was kind of cool, so I posted that on my social media accounts, and a lot of people loved it, and uh, you know what's a coincidentally, Frank Zappa died of prostate cancer, he was diagnosed in 1990, and he died in 1993, and uh, because it, they didn't operate on him because it was way too advanced, and he was just under medication. So uh, that was that's that was a shame. It really was. And then uh, he worked there at WQBK for seven years, 
And then he moved to Chicago to work for WXRT as a music director, not a radio disc jockey. And he began in 1984. And uh, then... In October of 1990, he left the station and moved to Minnesota. He got a job offer as a program director, and uh, it's uh, the radio station call letters were KTZ FM. Okay, and uh, he was there for one year, and uh, WX. WXRT reached out to him and said, would you like to come back to the radio station, but not as a a music director, but as a disc jockey to do the, uh, to serve the morning, you know, to do the morning show. And because Terry Hammert did that, um, and then she moved to middays, but she was there for a long time and she's still there. Uh, I think she is. Right. (laughs) You know, I haven't, I haven't listened to much about uh, WXRT. And he said, uh, I'll think about it. And he's in the, this upcoming audio club, he will explain what happened, you know, of uh, accepting the job. I will get that in a moment. And he, and he accepted it. And he took uh, over uh, Terry Hemmert's uh, slot. And that was in 1991, and then he, and he was there ever since. Yeah, you know, that was uh, kind of cool. Okay, right now I'm going to play a audio clip. I found this on YouTube. Uh, he explains uh, how he got started and uh, how he got to WXRT. Uh, this it's a uh, it's. It's about Lynn Bramer celebrating 25 years at XRT. This is from the Chicago Sun Times. Uh, they did a, uh, a video interview. And when I come back, I'll talk a little bit about a little bit more about Lynn Bramer. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I uh, did my first morning show, December 30th, 1991. And so I'm into my at the end of this year would be my 26th, but for intents and purposes, I'm suddenly bringing my 25th anniversary as the morning host of WXRT. I had come here in 1984 as the music director. I worked behind the scenes from 84 to 90, working with the program director, Norm Weiner, and in uh, 1990, I got a job offer in Minneapolis, and I said, listen, decided to get married in four weeks. I'm very happy where I am. And they said, uh, well, this is a perfect fit for you. The station's a lot like XRT, and it pays this much. And I said, hold on. Let me put Mr. Bramer on the phone. <laughs> Sorry, that's an old Woody Allen joke. Uh, so I went up, I interviewed, got the job, I got married, moved to Minneapolis, was there for 12 months, had a great time, learned to ski, saw the Minnesota Twins win the World Series, and found out that the owner of my radio station was bankrupt. So it made things very dicey. And when XRT called me uh, in August or September and said, you know, we're thinking that uh, we might want you to come here and be a morning DJ, I said once again, I'm very happy here. I don't know if I can leave this outstanding opportunity. (laughs) But in the back of my mind, there there were currents that were making me say, get the heck out of here. So I came back to XRT almost 12 months after I had left and replaced one of the acknowledged legends in American radio, Terry Hammer. Uh, And she moved to uh, middays. And that was remarkably 25 years ago. So listeners feel like they know you. And after this long on the air, they, they kind of do. I mean, they've seen you out at events. They've seen you on stage introducing bands. They've listened to you on the radio. Uh, they've heard stories about your evil, your evil brother David and your nice brother John and your, your dad's crew cut and uh, LTD Ford 1972 station wagon. So they know an awful lot about you. So people have been, I mean, people are going to be nice to you when you're saying you're celebrating your 25th anniversary. The default comment is, here's to another 25. 
another 25, I'd be 87. And I can guarantee you, I'm not going to make it here uh, when I'm 87. I um, I have no immediate plans to retire. Uh, I just signed a, a new contract, uh, so I'll be here for a while. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that video, uh, that audio clip. It was, it's a video clip on YouTube. If you'd like to watch it, uh, please do. And uh, listen to him and watching that video yesterday was very nice. And his voice, oh, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so um, Lynn Bremer was a... Uh, he was a huge Chicago Cubs fan, you know, and he hosted the uh, annual remote broadcast for the Cubs home opening day. I listened to one of uh, a couple of them. Uh, I'm, I've said this many times. I, I'm not a baseball fan, but uh, I wanted to listen to this, you know, because of him. And uh, it, it was great. It was wonderful like that. And... Uh, so he was uh, paired on in the morning show, in the mornings with uh, Mary Dixon, and uh, she they were th they were together for a long time, and then when WXRT was bought by other people in late 2019, uh, Lynn Bramer moved to middays, and uh, Mary Dixon left, and now she works for WBZ. I was interviewed uh, one time on that radio station. I don't know if she was there. I don't remember. I don't think she was. And then, um, so he was there, you know, until he passed, uh, until he uh, took a leave of absence of, uh, you know, for his illness, that is. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, so, you know, he... Well, when I went yesterday, when I uh, I was in my car, they, I, they on WXRT they played uh, they did they uh, did a tribute to him in the morning. Timmy Hammer was there, and there were a few other disc jockeys that uh, worked before, and they talked about Lynn. They would talk about their memories, and they played songs, their favorite songs, and I. I, rem I was in my car, and uh, you see, I was on my way to drop off uh, my old iMac. I just bought a new iMac computer at the Apple Store, and uh, I was listening in the car, and they played a couple songs he liked, and one that stood out was Gimme Shelter. <laughs> and uh, he, he said it was one of his favorite songs because he loved the Rolling Stones. That, I think... He was one of his favorite uh, rock groups. I think he loved uh, Bob Dylan, too. And when they played that, I was like, oh, this is so sad, you know, that he would love, love that song. So I arrived at the mall, and I uh, turned the radio off, and then went in, you know, dropped, and then uh, had the, uh, my old back computer recycled. Because uh, over the weekend, I was checking everything. If everything was intact, my documents, my files, my photos, everything was okay. And uh, my new computer is beautiful. I just posted that uh, last week. And uh, and then I went back, uh, when I was done, I went back in my car and I turned on the radio again and listened to more. And they played uh, uh, very selective songs. And yesterday on Facebook, they said they will replay that uh, from the Terry Hammert and, uh, the, re and the rest of the gang are doing their tributes uh, so it's on i can't say that word uh, odyssey it's on odyssey.com and if you would like to listen this will last until sunday i believe and you can listen i, I plan on listen, uh, listening to it again i like to do that so that was kind of nice <laughs> like that uh you know i felt so sad and uh they did play um some clips audio clips of lynn talking you know and uh what a man he was uh he knew poetry and uh he was uh he knew about uh, a lot of things that a lot of people did not know uh, like me you know pop culture or 
or like his maybe history, maybe a little bit of that. You know, as in his personal life, he loved to go out. He, uh, like I said, he was a Cubs fan, a huge Cubs fan, Cubs fan that is, you know, Chicago Cubs. Uh, he also went to a lot of restaurants. He he loved to go to the Metro, listen to music, and, uh, and spend time with his family. And he always said in interviews he loved to play uh, catch with his son, which is beautiful. That was very nice. Also, uh, when Lynn Bre Bremer uh, was on the radio, he did a uh, segment called Lynn Spins. And those were radio essays. So somebody would write in or email, ask him a question, and he would read it on the air. And then he would just uh, discuss it. And they, I've listened to a couple of them. They were they were very nice, you know, and very informative. You know, they, he did that for a long time. He really did. And uh, and the, he knew about mostly his music. He knew about his knowledge of music, and it's uh, sometimes it was serious, sometimes it was hilarious, <laughs> like that. So right now I'm going to play the opening of Lynn's Bins. I found that. So it's kind of, uh, so if you have, if you were a huge fan of his and you remembered, uh, and if you'd listened to Lynn's Bins uh, frequently, you would know the opening of that. So sit back and enjoy the, op the opening of Lynn's Bin. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> The mail's in. Oh, yes, wait a minute, Mr. Bozeman. Wait. The mail. The mail is here. You have 937 messages. There is a message for you. All of which are marked urgent. The incoming message. Put the message in the box. Put the box into the car. Drive the car around the world. Until you get Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the opening for Lynn's Bins. And uh, every time that, that radio essay segment aired on the uh, on the air, he would say uh, at the end, take nothing for granted. It's great to be alive, which is true. That is beautiful. Also, Lynn Bramer, uh, in his spare time, loved, uh, like I said before, he uh, he enjoyed music. He was a huge Cubs fan. He also liked to go out and eat and uh, try all kinds of restaurants. Uh, he would try classy places or Italian beef. I mean, it seems like he loved it. I've seen videos of that. <laughs> so, and uh, that was kind of nice. It really was nice. And uh, he often, uh, one of his other hobbies was he had a sailboat. He went sailing, and uh, he said one time he would go on his sailboat and he would just forget about everything. Forget about, you know, he would uh, clear his mind, whether it's at the radio station or any problems that bothered him. You know, it was stress-free, and he felt so happy and very content, and he really was. That's that's beautiful. Um. You know, because, uh, like I said before, when I heard the news that he died, and uh, it was very devastating to me and to his listeners and his fans and his co-workers. Oh, that was awful. We, we know he was sick, but uh, this was, uh, we were hoping he would beat it, you know, beat this. I, w I told him that when I emailed him. But he did the best he could. He really did. And... Uh, so because, you know, this uh, this disease is god-awful, it's terrible, because a lot of famous people uh, have been have died from it. Uh, for example, like uh, Frank Zappa, which I mentioned before. Also, uh, there was Gunther from the TV show Friends that was played by uh, James Michael Tyler. He died uh, last year. Also, actor Bick, Bill Bixby, famous for My Favorite Martian and... Uh, the Incredible Hulk, but this uh, he 
he was a i think he was uh, i don't know how old he was but he died in 1992 but back then uh there were treatments and you know medications and all that were not that advanced now we have options so that's that's good to know and i'm still scared uh, for myself you know i'm doing okay but uh you know we just uh just enjoy life you know just enjoy one day at a time you know that's what we're here for and he often uh said on the radio uh you know because he said that uh he described himself as your best friend in the whole world and uh he also told listeners it's great to be alive he said that too just like i said before and you know what uh he was and now he's gone and we'll never forget him i certainly won't so uh this is pete Costanas, your host of van chicago and stories the podcast uh this podcast will be uh available wherever podcasts are on uh, apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify please subscribe uh, also amazon music breaker overcast also uh it'll be uh on my youtube channel uh van chicago and stories uh please subscribe on that and also my social media accounts facebook twitter reddit and finally my blog van chicago Land blog so that's uh that's it folks and uh my deepest condolences to to his family and his friends okay so here's Ray Rayner saying bye 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 and here's me saying bye bye bye. <laughs> so I'll have another podcast episode this weekend. So take care everyone and so long. Thank you. We have to go. Bye bye bye.